Good morning. Folks, and good news, yesterday's YouTube issues were resolved in our favor in less than six hours. We've got news from ground level out to intergalactic space. We've got your weather and null school temperature runs at the end as well, but we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours were very quiet. Still no sunspots or solar flares. Still have coronal holes as the primary feature to notice. We've been inside the stream from a departed southern opening, but that is waning this morning. And when we look up in blue, we see the phi angle is set flowing from Earth back to Sun. Do expect that to change as the northern coronal hole swings through tonight. You can also see the equatorial patch coming in right behind it. Remember from yesterday, it will be the phi angle shift that tells us a new magnetic connection has been made. Let's go next to gold oxygen. The gold satellite has sent back its first oxygen emission image staring at the sunrise time directly below it. With the air glow and excitement on the day side, aurora and northern polar wind outflow visible too. For GEC studies, it will need to give us much more detail, however. Up next, we're going to ice in Greenland, where a pretty cool animation is out plotting the different detections over time. Blue is the oldest, red is the newest, and the entire sequence is made from data from the various ice satellite monitors, with the latest being this IceSat 2, the unquestioned best coverage in the field. Speaking of melting Greenland ice, turns out that AMO and NAO are far more controlling over those trends than are other oscillations. We hopefully remember from previous studies, the number one exogenous modulator of those two modes is the sun. Both force ice melt positively with its high active phase forcing. In that same vein, channeling last year's Princeton bombshell about every climate model underestimating the cooling capacity of clouds, we have Connecticut this morning coming out and showing how human activity will increase this cold forcing in the Arctic. The top story today goes to intergalactic dust. For those who don't know, our covert matter and currents hypothesis involves a ton of unseen dust in the cosmos, and since we know that dust attracts ions and can hide electric current, unseen dust becomes a lot more than unseen dust. Well, today we are learning that there is a universally ubiquitous nanometer-sized dust grain field a giant population spread across the cosmos. It has been our position indeed that the charge is what is actually spread across space. The dust would just be attracted to it like a Swiffer sweeper. And it highlights the universal energy field indirectly, also providing a path of lesser resistance for weak cosmic currents, which can actually explain the missing matter problem of attraction. Tracking your textbook says we should get the first couple boxes tonight, Books do start shipping out before the weekend. Last 10 days to get the discount on the second batch of pre-orders. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.